Hey everybody, what's going on? Your host Lovely Cheese Pizza here in a day that was just marred by two eerily similar but both equally horrible basketball games followed by just having to exist on a daily basis in the world of American politics that just makes you want to jump off of a damn cliff. I cannot tell you how relieved I am to be able to just escape for a little while into my tranquil zone that is video games. So with that said, welcome back to Let's Play some more Gran Turismo 3, the ultimate driving simulator. It's draining, man. <laughs> it really is. It is something else. So what we were able to do last time is we jumped into the license center and we grabbed ourselves that rally license, which I'll tell you, that R8 test really tested my patience. <laughs> it was a tough one. And I made it so hard on myself, realistically, was kind of the main problem. There were just so many like minor mistakes that ruined the whole thing for me. But we did get it, and that's the most important thing. And what we're going to do, I'm actually going to divert a little bit the course of what I had planned out for uh, at the end of last episode. We're going to still buy the same car, but we're going the thing we're going to do first with it is going to be a little bit different than what I had said. So we're going to jump right in here into uh, Mitsubishi for a minute, and I know how to pronounce it, don't give me the flack, and we're going to go right here, because not only do I love the Roman numeral 7, because I think it looks aesthetically much more pleasing than, uh, than, f than 4 or 6, um, dude, that French blue, just look at it! <laughs> oh, it's so beautiful. Oh my god, I love it. It just, it just looks great. Maybe somebody can answer this for me, though. Why is it, why is it in this game, and I think it actually may apply for all the other Gran Turismo games, why is it that every single Lancer in this game, it doesn't matter which one it is, it could be this one, it could be this one, it could be this one, all the way up to these ones, which I don't know who the hell Tommy Mackinnon is, but I don't know why having his name slapped on the back of that car makes that thing an extra th almost four grand to have. <laughs> but hey, it's there. Every single one of them all have the exact same base Hitler points. You know, they all have 276 of it. So like, why, why is there such a wide price range between them? It, it's so strange to me. <laughs> That's why I'm taking middle of the road, I'm taking the one that's the most aesthetically pleasing, I would say. And we're gonna go with this one. So if you don't like it, well, I don't know what to tell you. I mean, you can't really tell me otherwise, because I'm filming this away from all of you, and so you cannot tell me <laughs> live to not make that purchase, and so I'm doing it. Now, this is, this is the situation. What I could do right now is I could just get this thing rally ready right away, but this is why I'm taking a slightly different path first because I think in the end it'll actually work out better. Because if we were to go into this right now to buy the dirt tires that we need, we'd have to drop 22.5 freaking ultra dimes to get these damn tires. And that just is insane to me. I mean, it's not nearly as egregiously horrible as having to sell my own home to buy these T8 super soft ones. That is in a league all its own. But the fact that they're still just tires, man. Like, what tires on this planet cost almost $23,000 to buy? Like, they're just rubber. It's just rubber. I mean, I don't know if it's like a gold schlager type of thing where there's just gold flakes infused into these tires, but I, I don't know. I'm not sold on it. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to buy some sports tires because we're going to do the street races first with this. Because we're at the end of it, we'll be able to come back and buy those tires, but our car is going to be infinitely more equipped for this situation. We're going to go with the Stage 2 Turbo Kit to, to kind of start it off, bump it up to 376. We're going to, uh, we're going to get the uh, Racing Intercooler, which will bump us up to 406. Oh, yeah, see, you know where this is going. This is all good stuff. Then we're going to go in here. We're going to get ourselves that good old-fashioned racing chip, because it is a great thing to have. And I think there's also multiple Evo meetings, too. I think there's another one in, like, the amateur area. So it's, it's actually really good that we're building this thing up like this. Um, we can also get... The, do, we get do we get the muffler and air cleaner for 451, or do we do the port polish? Aha, see? 
You pay less money and you get more out of it. Sweet mother of God. Okay, we're going to go with this and we're going to stop right there. I don't want to spend all the money because we do still need to kind of build it back up a little. So let's go jump into the race. But by, and what I'm, So what I'm saying is we're going to go and do the Evo meeting. We should be able to win that with all the upgrades we just did. And we'll have enough money from that and the prize car that we get to be able to go back and buy our dirt tires. And then with that, we can jump into the rally race and we can do the Tahiti Challenge of Rally, which in no way, shape, or form does that roll off the tongue the right way. It just, it sounds so backwards, you know? <laughs> like, it's it sounds like broken English, like, Hey, Ted, are you ready to indulge in the Tahiti Challenge of Rally? Oh, yes, Dave, I'm totally ready for Tahiti Challenge of Rally. You know, like, why wouldn't they just call that t the Tahiti Rally Challenge? That sounds so much better. I don't know who the, what the hell they're thinking, but hey, what do I know? That's just, uh, that's just what that is. So we'll come back to that probably next episode, I would assume. But for now, we'll dive right on over here to the Evo, uh, the Evo meeting. And we're going to do, I think Trial Mountain's a nice way to start. We're, we're pretty familiar with with Trial Mountain, I would say. It's not foreign territory, and because I, I don't really I don't really feel like you know getting my sea legs for this car would be a wise choice on something like Laguna Seca of all things. Okay. Oh yes. <laughs> oh boy, it is so good. It's just so clean looking, and hey. I'm an absolute sucker of all suckers for the color blue, especially darker shades of it. Oh boy. Hey, there's a Tommy Mackinan edition. I can see it's really paying off for you. I see having that extra name slapped on there is really doing you some favors. And with me, we are going to absolutely lay down the hammer like no one has ever seen before. It'll actually feel really nice for a change to just get a nice, decisive win at the end of all this, provided that everything holds up the way that I want it to. You never know. <laughs> oh, no! That guy, like, that guy, like, jackknifed his way into that that one little rock that they let you kind of, ah, get, uh, get stuck in over there. I'll tell you one thing. Actually, I can tell you more than one thing. I can tell you a lot of things, but I'll tell you one thing right away. There is one thing that I am super, super duper ultra super spectacular amazing V excited for uh, that I found out last night while I was kind of poking around on, on Facebook um, somebody had posted on I think it was on Verge which I'm kind of like I'm kind of hot and cold with the Verge sometimes they, they post some cool things and they post some just kind of weird like I, I didn't need to know any of that type of things but the thing that they posted I oh man my level of excitement is going through the roof on it I found out that there is going to be, sometime this year, I don't know when, I don't think that part's been confirmed yet, but at some point this year, um, on Netflix, there is going to be a an animated Castlevania series, which, <laughs> holy smokes, <laughs> that is so cool! I'm And I'm so happy, I'm so happy that they're making it an animated series instead of a movie. Like... Like, when I heard that there was going to be Castlevania going to Netflix, I was like, oh god, it's going to be like, it's going to be like a one-off movie. And, I mean, you all know, anybody that's a gamer knows that the whole video game to movie adaptation market has been just god-awful. I mean, the, the, mo the most recent, you know, the most recent addition to the family of horrible, you know, horrible things like that was Assassin's Creed that in the box office it did absolutely terrible. I think it was just an, a total flop of, of monumental proportions. Um, and so, like, when I heard that it was going to Netflix, I was like, oh no, no, please don't do that. It's going to be a movie, and it's going to be bad, because they're going to have, like, somebody like you, a bull, end up directing it, and it's just going to be just a total cataclysmic abortion of a movie, and it's going to be terrible. But I found out, instead, it's going to be an animated series by some guy that, you know, I, I'm assuming probably has a decent grasp on it. And, uh, and they're gonna be, they're gonna be following the, uh, the storyline of Castlevania 3, which I'm, I'm pretty pleased about that. I'm actually just glad that it wasn't Simon's Quest. Because, for some reason, I just had, like, this weird feeling that if they did Simon's Quest, they, they would find a way to troll everybody and find a way to incorporate the whole you know, pop-up dialogue box, the what a horrible night to have a curse type of thing, that they would just use that 
just once for like a you know for mild fan service but ultimate disappointment <laughs> and it would just be something like that but not only like the reasons why I'm super excited about it is a it's gonna be animated and I love I love animation it's I al I almost borderline like animation more than live action stuff I just uh, I, I think that there's so much more flexibility for creativity in it and then B it's Castlevania. I love Castlevania. It's one of my all-time favorite franchises of stuff. And so when I just when I heard the words Castlevania series Netflix, I was just like, "Oh god, I need to go, you know, relieve myself." But then Q, the final, the final the final quaalude in the in the concoction here is that from what I understand, this series is going to be just unbelievably gory. Like, people are, like, from all all accounts that I've read in all these different places now, everybody is saying that, you know, the, the, the person that's creating the show says it is going to be just a total bloodbath, which is perfect. Like, that is everything, that is absolutely everything that a Castlevania series should be. I mean, obviously, you know, back in the, the early, you know, NES days, you know, there wasn't really a whole bunch of, you know, blood and guts being spilled out of those. I mean, not, I mean, really a lot of the Castlevania games weren't, like, super heavy on, on, you know, bloodshed. But you, you would always think, like, if they ever made it into, you know, like a movie or something like that, that there would be. And the fact that whoever's picking this up actually is going to incorporate just a ton of gore into it is just a godsend. I, that makes it, it really, it really helps seal the deal for me on, on, you know, my excitement for it. Like, I just, I can imagine them right at, like, right off the bat, just to start the whole thing off, just, like, starting the entire thing with a beheading. <laughs> That's, like, that is a, a realistic way that I could see this series starting, is just, like, you know, a zombie or, like, a, or some type of weird abomination, just kind of, like, shuffling around in, in, you know, some room, and then, and then, uh, you know, all of a sudden you, you see, like, the classic, you know, screen flash, and something going straight by the neck, and all of a sudden the head just pops off, and just this fountain of blood comes flying out of the air. Like, that, that is what I would love to see to start the damn thing off. But it's going to be great. Oh, it's going to be so cool. So, that is, that is my excitement there, but now I must follow up the excitement with a bit of just bitter... Bitter confusion, I think, would be a good way of, of explaining it. I found out today, I guess, I guess that it was... I guess that it was announced somewhere, I don't know where the hell it was announced, but somewhere via the internet that um, I think Shigeru Miyamoto um, actually broke the silence and for some reason decided to announce the actual full name of uh, Link from The Legend of Zelda. And so when I, when I heard about that I was like, oh tight! Like uh, finally we're gonna figure out what his actual whole name is. And then the word comes out that his his actual full name, I kid you not, is Link Link. What the hell? <laughs> like, what kind of payoff is that? It's such a terrible name. I mean, at the same time, though, this is also coming from the same guy that, you know, decided that, that Mario and Luigi's last name was going to be Mario. So his, his name literally is Mario Mario and, and Luigi Mario. If I if I understand that situation correctly, so like it's it's not really a surprise I guess that they would take that route as far as naming conventions go, but I feel like it's kind of a slap in the face. Like you you were able to create such you know an immense you know depth filled world with all these you know dynamic characters in a sense, or well kind of sort of. I mean they don't really have a lot of they don't really have any dialogue, so they're they're about as dynamic as a non-speaking character can get, if we're, you know, not counting the CDI games. <laughs> I don't think that really counts. But, so, and you would think they would have, you know, some type of cool name, you know, like a Simon Belmont, or uh, insert any other name of a character in a quality franchise. And the name that you come up with is Link Link. I mean, I know, like, the name really isn't that important. It is, I kind of wish that the payoff there would have been a little bit better than that. Oh, boy. Like, are we going to find out somewhere down the road that Princess Peach's real name is Peach Peach? <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? 
Uh, it, it's it's just weird. And so it also kind of sparked a little bit of a like a question in my mind was okay. So if his name is Link Link, does this mean like like over the course of all the games that he's been in, have we been referring to him by his first name or his last name? I mean, I, I feel like that's kind of a solid question to bring up. I mean, for me, people hardly ever call me by my actual first name anymore. Like, I don't. I have a very, very, a very small list of people that actually call me by by Adam. Uh, it's it's a very it's a very small and waning collection of people. Like most everybody that knows me, just calls me Faust. I mean, Faust has been my nickname for close to like. I don't know, close to 15 years, I think. It's been a really, it's been a really long, enduring nickname that I've had, and in the lexicon of names that I've had, I've had a lot of them over the years. But, uh, so, like, I don't feel like, I feel like it could very easily be his last name that they're calling him by, and in kind of a nickname-ish way, but it would also still make probably more sense if, if they were going by his first name. But hey, when the name's the exact same, I don't think it really matters one way or the other. But it was something that I just kind of immediately thought about, like, huh, I wonder if they're, you know, calling him by first name or last name. Gosh, that turn. Still notice that turning with this car, a little weird. I think part of it might be slightly due to the fact that, you know, we don't have, we don't have better brakes. And so I think it's kind of making our ability to slow down quickly and, and execute these turns a little harder. <laughs> And this is turning into a very sloppy race. We, we will win in the end as long as I don't do something hilariously dumb like what I'm starting to do right now. Good God. Oh no. Oh no. What have I done? Why? Why do I have to make this hard on myself? <sighs> uh, you know, I'm just, I'm just, uh, I'm just trying to do this for, for entertainment value. Some, sometimes you just have to sometimes you just have to make things a little bit more interesting than they need to be not that it's just like a matter of hey I'm just driving really shitty right now I'm just I'm gonna I'm gonna put it under a very thinly veiled guise if I did it on purpose for you know to to insert some some artificial artificial tension if 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 there were because when I when I really need to turn it on at the end I can always do it Except for all those times that I tried to do it and and did not succeed in doing it. All right, here we go. Oh no, there's the that. Ah, nope. <laughs> I haven't really found a way to get around that turn without you know going into the dusty. Oh god, the name's Dusty Pants. Here we go. I mean, sometimes you just gotta you gotta jump into it. You gotta repair things. And then when you repair your driving skills, you get through it, and you still win by over two seconds, even though you conceded it <laughs> right in the middle of the final lap. It's all good. Cool. And just like that, now we can afford just those wildly expensive, almost near the level of disbelief, like the uh, the million dollar bicycles in uh, in Pokemon Blue or Pokemon Classic, I guess we could call it. Like, those have no business being that that price, I can tell you that right away. What are you going to give me? Oh, it's an Evo 4. Alright. I mean, we don't need it. Totally don't need it at all. I do like those uh, those huge-ass round, uh, round headlights underneath the regular headlights. I kind of like them. Okay, so we can probably just sell this guy now. Because we don't really need it. So, you know. Seventy four ninety five. Yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll do that. That's fine. And it didn't even have two hundred and seventy six horsepower. It totally had two seventy one. Did they give me a used car? <laughs> just like, it just kind of like lost some of its luster a little bit there. That wouldn't be surprising actually. Okay, so now what we can do? We're almost we're almost at time, by the way. I I'm trying not to hold this thing out here for too long. I say we buy these bad boys now. Oh yeah. And then we'll also eat, we'll eat, yeah we'll purchase them. We should be equipped with them now too, I would assume. And I think that we've got everything that we need to be able to walk right on in to um, yeah 452. I think we should have enough to be able to walk right on into that first rally challenge and and knock it out with 
I don't, I don't want to say relative ease, because there's always the possibility I can totally screw it up. But I think that we should be able to handle it without too much of a problem. 16.9%, not bad. Win percentage up to 83, looking a little better. Might be able to get that up with uh, three straight wins. We'll see what happens. But until then, my friends, this is your host, Lovely Cheese Pizza, saying thank you guys for watching. When we come back, we're going to go do our first rally races. So, with that said, I'm really hungry. I should probably go get something to eat. If you enjoyed the video, tap the like button. It helps me out so much. And if you want to see more in the future, do hit subscribe. I'm going to be posting these a lot. I got two projects that are almost done. So that will leave plenty more room for more of these. So until then, my friends, this is your host, Lovely Cheese Pizza, saying thank you guys for watching. And I will see you next time. Take care, everybody. Bye.